we know that we are not here by accident. We not we didn't just land up here this morning. But you called us here. Each and every one of us. Even those of you watching this online. I had the great honor and privilege of speaking at the men's camp yesterday. And I had some notes that I'd prepared to speak. But on the way there we prayed. I had I had a, a great team with me, a team of gentlemen that that came with me and so thankful for them. We just needed the keyboard, amen. We'll take it with next time. And the drums and the guitar and we were starting a band. <laughs> But isn't God so good that when we prepare something, and it's funny, I started speaking and I was speaking about order and how we, how we, how we like to put things in order. All, everyone in leadership, in business, whatever, whatever you're in, um, uh, Pete, you're busy planting. Everything has got to be in order, right? Those lines, when you've got to plant the maize, everything's got to be so far apart, the seeds, and there's order to everything. And the Lord was speaking to me about order and he just took everything out of order. And I started to speak and I started on a note and the Lord just sidetracked me totally, took me on a totally different direction. But guess what? God showed up. God showed up. And listen, if I do anything in life and God says change direction, hear me, I'm going to change direction. Because if God is not in it, I don't want to be in it either. It doesn't matter how ordered, how structured, how perfect it may look. If God's not in it, I don't want to be in it. And I want to pose a question to each and every one of you this morning. I want to read quickly before I get into the Word. This is not the Word. This is what the Lord laid on my heart. John 4, John 5, I apologize. John 5 speaks about a pool where there was a multitude of people laying around this pool. This pool was called, in Hebrew, Bethesda. It had five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped into the pool first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease or infirmity or turmoil or oppression or depression or whatever was weighing those people down when they stepped into the water because the water was stirred by an angel, they were healed. Now a certain man was there and he had infirmity for 38 years. It's a long time to have infirmity, right? So many of us go through life not knowing Jesus and we walk around with a type of infirmity. We walk around being bogged down and pressed down by the the trials and the tribulations of this world, thinking that we can carry everything on our own shoulders. The question I want to pose to you this morning is this sick man, remember Jesus came down to this pool and Jesus asked him. Jesus saw the man lying there And he knew that this man had been in this condition for a long time. And he said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to receive the word this morning? Do you want to be made well? I said this to the men at the camp yesterday. Well, the only thing blocking you is yourself. Can I preach? Can I say it like it is? The only thing blocking you from receiving is yourself. There is a pool 
available. For each and every one of you this morning, the rivers of living water are flowing. Will you step into the water? Will you step into the water? Will you take a risk? Will you let, will you take the opportunity to get out of your own mind? Will you take the risk to get out of your own mind? Because logic is the enemy of the supernatural. Did you guys hear that? Logic is the enemy of the supernatural. If you want to receive what God has in store, if you want to receive what God wants to provide, if you want to receive everything that we hear, everything that we believe, that song we sang, I live by faith and not by sight. This is what we need to grab a hold of today. The pool is in front of you. Will you get in? I'll leave that one with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the word I want to give you guys today is really, really simple. The Lord spoke to me. God will provide. Easier said than done, right? If I say to you, God will provide, you kind of look at me like... "Mm." I want to show you this morning how God provides. Three simple things. How God provides. Maybe four. I don't know if it'll fit in. And I believe this is a word in season. I believe that this word is going to help each and every one of us. You know when the Lord gives you a confirmation after a confirmation, specifically with me, I like to, when, I, when I've asked the Lord, what do, what do you want me to preach to your people? What do you want me to say? Because I don't want to say anything out of my own strength. I don't want to say anything out of my own will, out of my own emotions. I always ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want? What do your people need to hear? And I pray that the Lord gives me a word in season, a word that can help each and every one of us. I never want you to walk in here and think like, oh, I've heard that before. I want you to receive a revelation of the word from heaven. Amen? You know, God confirms in weird and wonderful ways. So on my desk in my office, I've showed a few people. It's the weirdest thing that's happening. So this week, I'm sitting at my desk, and there's little white flakes all over my desk. And I'm like, where is this coming from? So I blow it off, I blow it off, I get the desk clean. And it doesn't fall while I'm sitting there, but if I walk out of my office and I Go do something and I come back in, lo and behold, there's little white flakes on my desk. And you know, it made me think, made me think about how God provided for the Israelites in the desert. It made me think, I looked up and I was like, Lord, I don't know where this is coming from, but it looks like little white chips of paint. I don't know where it's coming from. It's obviously coming from the roof somewhere, but why, why do I not see it? I don't see it falling. They, they're big enough to see falling. But I don't see them falling, but they, they appear on my desk. And God just reminded me, and it was a confirmation for the word that he wanted me to share this morning, that God will provide for each and every one of us. Just as he provide manna for the Israelites in the Israelites in the desert, he will provide for each and every one of us. Doesn't matter what is going on, what your situation looks like, what, your, what the economy looks like, what the load shedding looks like. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. God says, My people, who are called by my name, I will look after them. That's Greg's version, amen. I will provide for them, amen. God wants to provide for each and every one of us. God will sustain each and every one of us. We serve a generational God. If He did it then, He can do it now. If he did it then, he can do it now. God will provide for each and every one of us. 
And I want to speak to you this morning about the different ways that God provides. I believe that the provision of the Lord is about to hit this ministry. I believe that the provision of the Lord is about to hit the ecclesia, which is the church for those of you who do not know. Revival is at hand. Revival is not coming. Revival is here. Revival is here and the Lord is going to provide for each and every one of us. If you have your Bible, we can now open them. Why don't you open up your Bible? If you don't have it, you can look on the screen, Genesis 45, verse 5. I want to tell you a quick story to give us some context about how God provides. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. This is Joseph speaking to his brothers. Remember, they sold him to slavery. Wow, who does that? For God sent me. Before you to preserve life. And God sent me before you to preserve a prosperity for you in the earth. And to save your lives by a great deliverance. One more time he says it in verse 11. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. For there are still five years of famine. There are three or four ways that God will provide for us. And the first way that God provides is by the hand of man. The hand of man. This is exactly what happened in this passage. Joseph is talking to his brothers. They've hurt him. They've ridiculed him. They've sold him into slavery. The same brothers that threw him into a pit and stole his birthright. Yet despite all they did to him. Imagine somebody doing that to you. I don't think you would be very happy, would you? Despite everything that they did to him. He turns around and he says to them, you meant these things to take me out. You meant these things to take me out, yet here I stand. I'm not bitter. I'm not offended. I'm not angry. But I can see that what I have gone through, God is using for my good. I wouldn't be here today. If, it had, if I hadn't gone through these things that I had gone through, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be standing when I'm standing, where I'm standing. But God used them. So where was he standing? He was a Jew. Remember, he was working in Egypt and he was working under Pharaoh. And at the time, Pharaoh was the richest, most powerful man on the earth. He had the greatest armies. He had the most wealth. He had the most land. He was the most powerful Pharaoh on the planet. And what did he do? He turned the keys or the power of everything that he had over to this, this Jew, this Jew by the name of Joseph. And Joseph then in return says to his brothers who had done him so much wrong, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I know everything in me and everything that the world says is I should get you back. I shouldn't give you anything. You don't deserve it. But yet that's not what he did. He said, do not be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you despite all that you did that was so wrong to me. Despite everything, the Lord brought me out on the other side. The Lord brought me out on the other side without a bitter spirit. And God has blessed me. And God has blessed me so that I could provide for you. And the Bible said that he told him to, each and every one of his brothers, to grab their families. And he gave them each a piece of land in Goshen. Now you guys remember Goshen was the most fertile land. It was the best of the land. And he didn't just give them a little a little townhouse stand, he gave them like a ranch. He gave them a a substantial piece of land. It was the richest farmland available. 
One of the ways that God provides for us is through the hand of man. In Luke 6, 38, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And I've never read this. You all know that scripture, right? Most of us can probably recite it. Shall God give into your bosom? Shall men give into your bosom, right? That's what it says. Shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that... What does that say? Oh, it's a King James. Wow. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? <laughs> the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now, you know that the King James is the closest to the original text. So that's why specifically I put it in there. But I have no idea what that means. Wow, that's, that's quite something. I didn't read that part because I got stuck on shall men give in to you? Shall men provide for you? God uses people. God uses people. Elisha, the Bible says, when there was a famine in the land and he was sitting there at the river, God used a raven to feed him. Then the word of the Lord came to him in 1 Kings 17 from verse 2, saying, Get away from here and turn eastwards and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded ravens to feed you there. Now, any of you, any of you who know what a raven is, a raven does not bring food, it takes it away. A raven does not provide, it actually takes. It's more like a scavenging bird. It takes away, it does not provide. And you know, I had this false misconception that every time I saw a crow, I was like, ah, oh, witchcraft. Ah. Or I thought it was like a bad omen. And the one day I was sitting playing golf and there was this crow flying over the top. I was, in, I was at the driving range. And Henny, who's my, my golf, he gives me golf lessons every so often. He looked at me and I said, I said, I don't like crows. And I told him why. And he looked at me and he says, no. Do you remember the story of Elijah and the brook? It's a sign of provision. And I was like, wow, hold on. That just changed everything. God will use the birds, even the ones that are supposed to Aren't they, they, they're actually called dirty, they dirty birds, aren't they? It's a, it's, a, it's a fail, there's a fail for it's a dirty bird. God will even use the dirty birds to provide for you. You know what the problem is for us as Christians? We expect everything to come in a certain way. On a silver platter, if you will. Or to be delivered by Postnet or what's it, uh, takealot.com. We do not expect things to come in different shapes and different forms. If a homeless man who smelled worse than anything you could ever smell walked in and gave you something, before he got to you, you would already start judging him, right? You would smell him and be like, Ooh, not me. But God uses anything and anyone. He uses whom he uses and he chooses whom he chooses. And if God wants to provide for each and every one of us, he might not be providing in this new season in the way that you expected him and the way that he provided in the last season. Because I can promise you Elijah wasn't sitting there at the brook waiting for the raven to come and feed him until God told him I'm going to send the raven to feed him. He probably thought the cows are going to come washing down the river. Come on. He would expect it in a more normal way but God will provide for you in supernatural ways if you allow him you know what the thing is our obedience is the key to God's provision for our lives I said this yesterday as well you know we we expect God to bless us but we only give him a little bit of our obedience if I think of my kids if they're not obedient I'm not going to reward them Parents, can I have an amen? If my kids are a little bit obedient 
am I going to reward them? Not necessarily. And so you need to, do you deserve to be rewarded? God expects us to be obedient. We need to be obedient. Our obedience is the key. And you see the prophet went and he did according to the word of the Lord and the provision came because the Lord told him to go there. How many times has the Lord told you to do something and you're kind of like, oh, I'm not ready. I don't feel like it. Do I have to? Really now? Do I have to? Do I have to? You know when the Lord speaks to you, maybe you're in a shopping center and you need to, and the Lord says to you, pay that, pay, pay that person's bill. Maybe just, Pay, buy their groceries for them and you're like mm, do I have to I've only got enough money for myself our obedience is what God uses to unlock God will only give you where, woo, this is good if God gives you something if God gives you a task Rox was actually telling me a story yesterday about somebody that went to heaven and in heaven, this guy was explaining that everybody has tasks. That's the only way that he could explain it. You have tasks to do. And, and he said when he was walking down, he could see like two or three people standing and it looked like they were praying together. And I think that's maybe some of the tasks that the Lord could give us to do in heaven to intercede. Because remember, it says that Jesus is, he intercedes for us in heaven, right? So if we are in him, remember I pre preached last week, oh, this is really good. We are, if we are seated in heavenly places with him and Jesus is interceding, then isn't there a possibility that we could be interceding too? So if the Lord gives us a task to do something, do you think He's going to give you the next, next task unless you fulfilled the first one? God has asked each and every one of us to do something. He's put something on your heart. He's given you a gift. Oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. Hold on. Rewind. God has given each and every one of us a gift. But we need to expropriate that gift. We need to use that gift. If you do not use your gift, God's not going to give you more. Remember we said, we spoke about leveling up. How do you get, how do you get your level up? You've got to beat the level. Woo! You've got to get past level A to get to level B. You've got to get past level 1 to get to level 2. And so on, and so on, and so on. And guess what? The levels just get harder. They don't get easier. Every time he'll expect a little bit more from you. Every time he'll ask you to come in a little bit deeper, pray a little bit harder, intercede a little bit more. Are you willing? Are you willing? God changed the nature of that bird to supply the needs of Elijah for three and a half years. And God is saying to his people this morning that I will provide for you. Do not be surprised in the way, shape, and form that it comes. Do not be surprised. I heard the story about Oral Roberts. You guys know Oral Roberts is he owns a university, Oral Roberts University. I believe that he's passed away already. And um, he got so much flack for this. Like he, people really ridiculed him and they pulled him under the carpet and everything. He was busy building his university and he needed money. And this gambler, the compulsive gambler, really rich man, but he was a compulsive gambler in, uh, where did they gamble in the US? Um, sorry, I didn't hear. Las Vegas, yes. In Las Vegas. And he's a very successful, he obviously he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, counts cards maybe, whatever, whatever. And he's, he's got it pretty waxed. He makes a lot of money. And he heard that Oral Roberts needed money and he wrote him a check for a million bucks. Not bucks, dollars, US. A million US dollars. Sent it to Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts received the check and he got so much flack because he took the check. Because they said, how can you take from this gambler that money is defiled? Woo! If somebody gives me a million dollars, listen, I'm going to take it. I plead the blood of Jesus over that money right now and I thank you, Lord, that you use whom you use and you choose whom you choose. In Jesus' name, God will provide for you and He will use the hands of man. Amen. Woo. Can we all claim this promise this morning? I want us all to say, God will provide for me. God will provide for me. 
through the hands of man. Amen. Amen. I want to decree over you this morning that kingdom connections are coming. Power relationships are coming. A power relationship is someone who has already achieved what you're trying to achieve. God is going to surround you with people that are going to supply some of the needs that you need. God will surround you with people like this. He will raise them up in your life. You won't have to look for them. He is going to send them. But you just need to make sure you're in the right place. Remember, Elisha had to be at the brook. We can't be standing over there under the tree. God will send you and surround you with the people that you need. It will be an effortless relationship. It will be effortless. It won't be something that you have to toil at and work at. You're just going to get along and it's going to be supernatural. And, he, and, we, and, and when he said in Luke 6, 38, that men will give to you, what the Lord is saying to you this morning is, I will put favor on you. I will put favor on your life. Do you know that when God blessed Jacob in the book of Genesis, he gave him power with God and favor with men. In Luke 2, 52, it says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in the favor of God and men. Everyone say, with God and man. God will put his favor on each and every one of you. He will cause you to be seen. Provision will be your portion. Oh, no, hold on. Let's flip the script a little bit. So that's, I'm talking about now receiving from people around about you. But what if God wants to use your hand? Will you be willing to do what God instructs you to do? Will you be willing to feed the orphan and the widow? Will you become the hands of God? Will you buy somebody a Christmas gift this Christmas? Somebody less fortunate. Somebody that doesn't have what you have. Clothe the poor, feed the hungry. Reach out to those who cannot help themselves. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Lord, use me. Lord, use us. Make my hands the hands of man. Help me, Lord, to help those who are broken and hurting and in need. God can use each and every one of us. Elijah was going to starve to death and the Lord instructed him. To go to Zarephath, and you'll find a widow there, and she will provide for you. She was making her last meal. You guys know the story in 1 Kings 17, 13. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterwards then make some for you and your son. You see why the enemy doesn't want you to sow and tithe is because he knows what God will do. When Elijah rocked up at the house of the widow, she had the last bit of flour. And he said, make me a cake. And then you can feed yourself. And she was like, there's not even enough here to make one cake, never mind for you and for me. But in obedience, she made the cake. And do you know what happened? Do you guys know the story? For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day that the Lord sends the rain on the earth. For as long as she needed, the Lord provided because she was obedient. Because she did what the Lord had instructed. God kept producing and he kept multiplying. He kept producing and he kept multiplying. I want to tell you guys this morning, the first time I tithed, it was the hardest thing I ever did. I was like, how can I give 10% of my money to God? And how am I going to get it back? I don't even have enough to get it out through the end of the month. Because halfway of the month, I was still drinking in those days. And halfway through the month, I would have drank it all out. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, God calls you and he, and he puts these things on your heart and you're like, Lord, I need a change in my life. Lord, I can't, I can't go down this road anymore. So you start being obedient. And listen, it's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest thing to do. But we see it here in the story. The last bit of flour. Out of obedience, she gives it. And a blessing comes upon her life. 
The blessing of provision comes upon her life. You guys have heard me say this a million times. It's in the Bible. God, so one time God says, test me in this. Test me in this. God kept producing and he kept multiplying. The same God that takes three loaves and two fish and he multiplies it and he multiplies it and he multiplies it again. It's the same God that says in Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church in Jesus Christ, to all the generations forever and ever. God will provide all of your need. God uses men to give into your hands. They will give you jobs. They will open doors for you. They will notice you. They will invest in you. They will see you. And God will use men to give unto you. And the second way that God provides quickly is through the hand of God. We better fix that clock. Otherwise, I'll keep you all here till two o'clock. It doesn't work. <laughs> In the new church, I'm going to put a digital clock. Amen. He, God uses the hand. He can't. God uses his own hand. Amen. God's hand brings supernatural blessings into your life. When Joseph took care of those families of his brothers for years and years and years, they didn't worry about anything. They had everything that they needed. They were in the land of Goshen. It was great. And Pharaoh through Joseph was the source. But the Bible says in Exodus 1 verse 8, now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph or his God and everything changed. All their resources dried up. Everything they had put their hope in, their faith in, their lives in dried up. And I want to encourage you this morning that I've been through some seasons where some sources have dried up. Those of you who are in business, when you lose a client or you lose a contract or somebody doesn't pay you or something doesn't come through or something drastic happens and changes your plans. Lord, it was supposed to go like this, but now this happened and I have to dig here and shift this there and I have to take that over there and bring this over here. And suddenly you have to start making plans because things didn't go the plans that I, that I thought the way that I thought it was supposed to go. Can I tell you that it's in those moments in our lives that God is teaching you something? God teaches us in those moments. God uses man's hand, but then God's hand is really, really touchy when you start looking at everything else to be your source instead of Him to be your source. God will send people to bless you, yes, but they are not your source. God will use the hand of man to bless you, but they are not your source. When you receive from man, be thankful. Be grateful. You can honor the person. Let it humble you. But never forget. Never forget. And I'm going to speak specifically. Most of us are in business. Specifically to the businessmen and women. Your business is the system. But God is your source. Your business is the system, but God is your source. The brook and the bird were the system, but God was Elijah's source. The widow and the barrel and the oil were the system, but God was the source. Every time God brings a shift, it's because God wants to teach us something. That we do not rely on on man's hand. That we do not rely on our own hand, but we rely on the hand of God. The river is not the the source. The bird is not the source. The widow is not the source. God wants us to come back to the real source, which is His hand. God's hand is the source. Exodus 16, 14 And when the layer of dew lifted there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as of fine as frost on the ground, like the white stuff on my table, God sent manna. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather in according to each one's need. One omer for each person, according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. This is good. God will give you what you need. 
God won't give you more than you require. He won't give you six loaves if you only need three. God will put it in your heart to get there. God will show you an end goal. He will show you a prize. He will show you the crown of glory. He will show you where you are to end up. But he supplies little by little, bit by bit, only as much as you need. We need to be thankful that God doesn't give us what we ask from him. Because if we, sometimes we ask and God knows, and sometimes we don't receive. But the thing is that God already knows that if I had given you what you had asked for, it would have broken you. If I had given you what you had asked for, you wouldn't have been able to manage it. Only when you fulfill the first task, like I said earlier, will God give you more to fulfill the next one. A lot of times in life, we aren't ready to receive what God wants to give us. If he gave it all to you at once, you probably wouldn't be able to sustain it. God lets you go through things to prepare you for what he wants to do in and through your life. He lets you go through things to expand your capacity according to the size of your assignment and the season you are in. If you are a giver and a tither, if you honor God, you serve God, you worship God, you walk in obedience, God says in every season that you are in, I will release resources for you to do my will. And he said, I will do it by the hand of man and I will do it by the hand of God. God still does miracles. He is still the provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. From him are all things and to him are all things. Can we give God a praise for everything that he has provided? Everything I have needed, thine hand has provided. We need to be humble and thank God for what he's given us. We need to be humble and thank God that we drove here today. That if we walk together, we have clothes on our back. We need to be thankful to God that we actually came from somewhere. God is doing great things. Even the new church, God's providing. The, the walls are up. We still got a long way to go, but God is providing. And we are trusting and we are believing Him for the finances and the funds to get through it and to get it all done. Thank you, Lord, for your hand. God has used man's hand. People have sown substantial seeds. And we are trusting that the Lord would continue to sow and use man's hand. If he can do it for me, guess what? If he can do it for the church, guess what? He can do it for you too. Amen. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop believing God for more. Don't stop believing God for better things. Don't stop. Don't lay down. Get up and fight. We need a shift to a posture of expectation. We need a shout. My God will supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory in Jesus' name. God will supply all of your needs. He will make you the head and not the tail. He will bless you in the city and He will bless you in the field. I want to remind you guys of something this morning. What God puts in place, no man, no power, and no principality can undo. When God's favor is upon your life, whoo, He will supply all of your needs. He will bless you by the hand of man, and there is a wave of the blessing of the hand of man coming. He will bless you by the hand of God. There is a wave of supernatural provision coming in the name of Jesus. And here is the next way that God will bless you. He will bless you by your own hand. God will bless you by your own hand. It's called a job. Some of you won't even read the book of Job because it's spelled Job. 
for 40 years, God supplied to the Israelites by His hand. The hand of God did the miracles. Joshua 5, 12, then the manna ceased. On the day after they had eaten the produce of the land, the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of the land of Canaan that year. There comes a season that God says, by your own hand, when the manna ceased, in Deuteronomy 11 verse 10, it says, for the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. Now, those of you who don't know, in the land of Egypt, remember everything, the source was the Nile River. The land was dry. And they had a pump water. This was pre-Roman times. Romans, the Romans were really clever and they built aqueducts. Those of you who don't know what aqueduct is, it's like a water trough that they would feed the water from the river. But in these days, there was no aqueducts. They used to pump the water by foot. Now, those of you, the quickest thing that I could think of how to pump it by foot, you think of, I thought of a foot, pump, uh, a bicycle pump that you pump like this, but this was one that you pump like this. And you had to pump water to, 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 to feed your field. But remember, if you're pumping with a foot pump, the water comes out the other side like little by little, little by little, little by little. The faster you pumped, the more water you got. But I promise you, you were going to get tired and, and eventually you're going to be like trying to pump this thing with like different parts of your body and trying to get something right little by little. And it was just enough to keep you alive. It was just enough to sustain you. And God said to them, I don't want you for the rest of your life to be dependent on just getting by. The problem is that so many of us as Christians, we just want to get by. This is the hand that I was dealt. This is the cards that the Lord gave me. This is just my lot in life. God doesn't want you to just get by. The hand of man, the hand of God, but God will bless the hand and the fruit of your labor. And the, and the land that I'm talking to you about, the, the thing that, the hand that you're using your hand that I'm speaking to you about this morning is shifting from a foot pump mentality to a land filled with milk and honey mentality. We all go through foot pump seasons. We all go through seasons in our lives where it's just little bit by little bit. Lord, when, 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 when. I know, I know you've shown me. I, I, I've seen it. But it's just psh, psh, little bit by little bit, little bit by little bit. We all go through these seasons and those seasons stretch us. They stretch us. They, 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 they pull something out of us that requires more from us. It tests us. It gets you to worry. But God says that I am shifting you. I am shifting you to go through. If you are obedient, you will get out on the other side. God wants to see your faith. Will you keep doing what I've called you to do? I've put the pump in front of you. Will you keep pumping it? Will you stay where I told you to stay? Will you submit where I've told you to submit? He wanted to see if we'd keep standing, if we'd keep sowing, if we'd keep fighting the good fight of faith. It says run with endurance, this race set out before you. There is a race that we need to run that has every race. Anybody ever run a race or walked a race or done any sort of race? Normally on the race, there's little water things. I need water. You guys know what I'm talking about? Little water stops, sort of like checkpoints. Some of us haven't even reached checkpoint one because we're not obedient enough to what God has asked us to do. If God has called you and told you to do something, you need to be obedient and you need to listen to what he had said and you need to move and you need to advance and you need to keep pumping that little pump and go and go and go. And guess what? Sooner or later you get to the checkpoint and what happens at the checkpoint? You get refreshed. 
you get refilled. You can take a breath, a breather. Yes, Lord, thank you, Lord, that I, I feel like I'm actually getting somewhere. And then guess what? God says, okay, now go again. Keep on going. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. God wants to bless us. He wants to give you power with God and favor with men. God wants to take you from a foot pump mentality to a land flowing with milk and honey mentality. God wants to release miracles in each and every one of our lives. But those miracles may be dependent on the work of your own hand. What are you doing with your own life? You may be saying, what do you mean? What do you mean? God says, I choose. God says, I choose you to use the work of your own hands in the land that I have given you. Each and every one of you have a gift. Everyone? Amen, three holy people in the room. (laughs) Each and every one of you has a gift. God has given you a gift. But he says, I'm not going to do it for you. You have to find out what that gift is. You have to search for it. I've given it to you. It's yours. But you need to figure out what that gift is and grow that gift and cultivate that gift and build your capacity in the area in the gift that I have given to you. Rox and I are business people. Those of you who don't know, I'm not just a pastor on a Sunday morning. I actually work a nine to five job. Um, I've got my own business and it's way worse than working for, for a boss because you've got to stress about everything else at the same time and you never really switch off. And we've got your know, family and 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 all you, those of you who don't know. And we've worked and we've toiled. Even at this ministry, we've worked week after week, we've toiled week after week, we've prayed, we've plowed the land, we are still plowing the land, and we've got a long way to go, the fields are but a mess, the harvest is plenty, and the workers are few, but we are plowing, we are going, day after day, week after week, month after month, season after season, Rox has worked and she's, she's an amazing, successful businesswoman, her businesses are growing, but it's only because Day after day, night after night, you put in the time. Somebody was telling me a story this morning that they were trying to get some kid to do exercise and they'd set out a little program for the child to do, something basic, and got through the first three exercise reps and said, no, I'm giving up, I can't do this. Because it was too hard. Guess what, guys? The things that God has put in your life for you to achieve might not be easy. But He will not give you more than you can handle. God's put so much on the inside of you and He knows what is on the inside of you because He made you. But some of us don't know ourselves. Some of us do not even know what we are capable of doing. Other people might see it on you and they're like, yeah. You know, you're not even, you haven't even scratched the surface. God knows. But it is for us to cultivate those gifts. It's for us to get out of our boxes. It's for us to put in the time and do more and say, Lord, expand my capacity. Push me in this area. Lord, help me to grow so that I can be more like you. Labor after labor. God says you have skills. You have skill sets. You have abilities. I will provide you through the, ma- through the hand of man, through the hand of God. But there are some levels that you will never get to unless you find out what those gifts are in your life, what I'm good at, what I'm gifted at, what have I got on the inside of me? Can each and every one of you, can you stand? And I want you to hold out your hands like this. Both hands. I want you to hold out your hands. I'm almost done. I want you to look at your hands. May the God of heaven Close your eyes. May the God of heaven bless the work of your hands. May it increase. May it multiply. Whatever your hands touch, may it multiply. May it increase. May it overflow. Jesus, I decree this morning that a special anointing 
would drop from heaven, Lord, that the oil of heaven would even run over people's hands right now in the name of Jesus, that whatever they touch, Lord Father God, will turn to gold in Jesus' name. The Lord will open up to you His good measure, the heavens, to give you rain to your land in the season and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Whatever you do, whatever you put your hand to, God will work and He will multiply it like He did the bread and the fish, like He did with the crow and the widow. God will use your hands to multiply in the season in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless their hands. Bless their hands. Bless their hands. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can take your seat. I'm almost done. I know it's rough out there. I know the economy is terrible. But God says, if you will, if you will look at me as your provider, I am Jehovah Jireh. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am the one that provides all of your needs. It's not I did provide. It's I will provide. I am El Shaddai. The Lord says, to each and every one of you this morning, I will provide through the hands of man. There are blessing people coming into your lives. For some of you, it may be a wife. For some of you, it may be a husband. For some of you, it may be a person that needs to come alongside you and mentor you, a person who blesses you. Uh, I decree unmerited favor upon your life. And then he uses the hand of God. There will be a fresh wave of the provision of God over each and every one of our lives for your ministry, for your business, for your career, a supernatural favor. And then the lastly, the hand, your own hands, the hand of labor, the hand, your own hands, the hand of your labor will prosper. The hands of your labor will multiply. It will increase. It will produce fruit in its season. You will be highly fruitful in the name of Jesus. Last one. The Bible says that I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Every calling will have an enemy. There is a reason for every season. But in order for me to grow my capacity, I might need to face some things. I might need to battle some things. And you know, every battle you go through, you come out, every victorious battle you have, you come out stronger on the other side. And the next enemy that comes at you, you identify them and you say, but hold on, I've beaten you before. I know exactly where to go. I know exactly, I just needed Bob right and Bob left and boom. Next, please. And this is what God wants for each and every one of us. He wants us to be able to overcome the enemies that are in front of us. And guess what? Sometimes God puts the enemies in front of us. Sometimes God puts them there so that He can show you, I have put something on the inside of you that you can overcome. There will be resistance. There will be trials. There will be tribulations. But God says... Everyone say, but God. In Psalm 66 verse 12, you have caused men to ride over our heads. Whoa, that would be fun. We went through the fire. Anyone been through a fire? We went through the water. Anyone felt like you're drowning? But you brought us out to rich fulfillment into a abundant place. You may have gone through the fire, you may have gone through the flood, but God brought us out into an abundant place. How many voices told you, you can't do it? Sometimes it's our own voices. You can't make it, you're not good enough. Stop it. Give up. Stop acting. I've heard that one. Stop being somebody you're not. 
you've changed. You're not strong enough. You're not big enough. You're crazy. (laughs) But when you go through the fire and you still believe, when you go through the flood and it doesn't overtake you, you may have felt like you were drowning and it was just your nostrils sticking out. There is something about that person that has been through some stuff. When you've gone through some stuff and you've overcome those things, when you've worked through the river and you're coming out on the other side, God says, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome to your place of abundance. And I'm not talking about money. We thank God for money. But I'm talking about a place of purpose, a higher calling that your everyday same old, same old will not be able to sustain, a place of making a difference, a place of standing, knowing who you are, knowing who you've become, knowing that you aren't who you used to be. If you're going to be successful, you need to know things. You need to know who God is. And you need to believe in God. You need to know who you are. And you need to believe in yourself. After you've been through the fire and you've been through the flood, God takes you through the processes of life to build you and purify you and Anybody ever swam in a pool and you have to trade water? Anyone ever played water polo? It's like the worst thing ever. But you've got to trade water for a really long time. But the more you trade water, the more, the higher you can go. The more you can elevate yourself out of the water. The more I do something, the stronger I get. Those of you who go to gym, ride a bicycle, whatever you may do, the more you walk. The more you do something, the stronger you get. The more you do it, the stronger you get. We need to use the gifts that God has given us in order to be able to be stronger, to sustain the new levels that God wants to pour out into your life. God is going to provide for you through the hands of man, through the hands of God, and through your own hands. I need to hurry. Stay in God's house. Stay in God's word. Start giving and tithing and honor the Lord with your life. God wants to bless you. It's a biblical principle to give. So, and you shall reap a harvest. I've learned it myself. When we walk in obedience in all the areas of our lives, God will bless you in all the areas of your life. We all want blessing, but we only give God in certain areas. But we want blessing in all the areas. We need to give in all the areas. And guess what? You'll receive in all the areas. I'm not playing games with you guys. I'm not telling you this because it's a pretty story. I'm not telling you this because I need your money because I don't need your money. I'm doing this and I'm telling you this because this is for your own benefit. This is for your own benefit benefit. I'm here to tell you the truth because guess what the Bible says? The truth will set you free. God wants to give you more than you can ask, think, or imagine. Will you trust Him? Will you go all in this morning? Will you allow the hand of God, the hand of man, and your own hand to sustain you and to provide for you. God maybe has used the hand of the enemy to build your capacity, to get you to go through things. But guess what? Every enemy that has come before us, the enemy is already under his feet. And if we are seated in heavenly places, guess what? All things belong to him. All things. Give God all of you, and you will receive all of Him. Amen.